Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mantalk.ke. Thanks for coming back this week. Thanks for following us on our socials. If you don't, they are all linked below on YouTube, podcasts, etc. Thank you, Kafisi, for being our location sponsor. We're back at Riverside Drive, Keystone Park. We're in the Knowledge Room. It's a great place if you want your company to have a co-working space. Or if you're an individual and you want to come on your own, you can use the social areas. Lovely coffee, lovely staff. So I recommend it. And you might bump into us when you're here as well. So, Oscar, do you want to do the honours, buddy? We have two guests today. I know. Um, I know. Guys, uh, as you can tell from my energy levels, I'm very excited <laughs> to introduce some of these two lovely ladies. I have Rebecca and Kirote on my right. Hello. And the incredible Taddy Kapaya. Hi. Um, here's a problem. Um, I think we're going to need subtitles for this episode <laughs> for myself. Uh, it's as if I'm in London again and I'm trying to figure out what someone is saying. <laughs> I am stressed. This is going to be the most stressful episode ever shot. Brilliant. Um, first of all, Becky, I have to say, you look incredible. You look fantastic. Thank you so much. I think the, latest, the, mic. the latest compliment I've given you is you look like a billionaire's wife. And that's the goal. That's the goal <laughs> in every aspect. Tati, of course, I don't need to speak, guys. I mean, come on, look at the camera. Glorious. Thank you. Mm, we have imported them straight from London. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but London took them from us. So it's just, you know, reparations. Um, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Incredible. How do you guys right. feel? Very happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. 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 Excited. Kind of nervous. Excited. Nervous. Nervous is good. Yeah. It means you care. Yeah. It means yeah. you care. Yeah. So fun fact. Um, Becky is my sister. In case you don't know, uh, you might have seen it on my on our page. And Tati is a family friend and a very close friend of Becky. So we're in. Uh, Good yes. company today, buddy. Yes. Very good um, company. Please. Um, yeah. How, how did we meet, guys? Then there's Oscar, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to suffer. I'm, I'm going to suffer through this oh, episode. Get out. <laughs> Silent jabs on his own podcast. Uh, That's... Uh, yeah, everyone's in blue. Um, yeah, you not... did not get the memo. Like yeah. I said, he won the G. I'm not in the yeah. um, plus 4 4 group chat, um, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> I believe you have a plus four four number there, buddy. We have a great time. Oscar, you, you have a plus four four number. I do, but I still have not been added to the group chat. God damn it. Uh, God damn it, you know. Uh, here's a question I just had to ask. Um, Becky, could you please explain the circumstances of how I met you and Tati? Oh, okay. So I've obviously known Oscar for quite a while because I helped out at the beginning of the Man Talk podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously I know Tati for a while. Um, so me and Tati met up for a shoot day in mm-hmm. London. Um, and I believe we were going for breakfast with Sam first and then we're like, hey, do you want to come along? Yes. Um, so we had breakfast with you mm-hmm. and then I went, I met up with Tati and then somehow you guys were also still in London for like the whole day and I was like, hey, let's have dinner. So then we went to Miss Scusi. In please Cop- say that word again. Guys, please. I knew this happened. Uh, just, say, just say it again. Where? <laughs> Miss Scusi. Oh, goodness. You're leaning again. What's oh, with you in this I don't know. I feel like I need a minute. A little je ne sais quoi, you know? Do you know what I mean? So, so uh-huh. yeah, we met at Miscuzzi, um in Covent Garden mm-hmm. and Great we place. had dinner mm-hmm. and healthy debates, healthy oh, debates between really? the two of them. I just remembered all the debates it you had. It was so intense. Like Harry Potter versus Star Wars or oh. something. Mm. Yeah. That yeah. sounds quite intense. It, it really was, was very intense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing is, when you're arguing against Tati, um, who you can clearly tell is definitely for the Harry Potter. <laughs> um, she walked into this room today. First thing she did was like, oh. Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> not in a happy <laughs> way. Not yeah, Jeremy say, Clarkson. Not Jeremy, not Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah. Then she's like, oh, this is such a British, British place. Yeah, I'm no. having such a good time. This no, is no, amazing. She's You're really getting do, the do, cadence do, of my do, words. Do, <laughs> You're saying it as if I'm a fan of yeah, all these people in the world. Then, 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 then she went, ah, oh, uh, can I get you some coffee, Tati? Then she's like, no, 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 I'll have some tea. Yeah. Of course. Some yeah. peppermint tea. But I think that's more Kenyan of me. Then she goes, boils the kettle. Like she's like, ah, oh, let me. It's so authentic. I, just, I used to have the one that whistles. You do it to yourself at this point. I used to have the one that whistles. <laughs> she goes, she goes, I used to have the one that whistles. So yeah. the person who's like, and guess uh, what? Outside the building, I was like, should I show her? There's a building called nine, that's that's just at nine and three quarters. Mm. So, <gasps> <laughs> really? Oh where? This is what, just is opposite. So opposite where we are. Opposite right where we are. Have you seen Harry Potter? No. We weren't allowed we to watch Yeah. It. My mum was fine, like, there's fine, too many fine. demons. Yeah. Fine, and, uh, fine, yeah. Fine. Mm, it's a judgment day. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so, so guys, when I met um, um, Becky and Tati, they were so kind as to show me um, 
kind of the cool places to go yeah. when I'm in London. Ooh. And yeah. I just wanted to thank you guys on camera. Oh, oh well, thank you. you guys they have, have been. They're great taste as well. They're the people to, if you go to London to, to chill with. Uh, listen, I'll just tell, uh, listen, if you're students in London, say? I now know where to avoid mm. as oh, a yeah. student. Oh, yeah. Uh, where have you learned to avoid then? Mm. The places you've showed me. Like? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, because like, like, hey, yo, these girls are going to, you know, um, Miss Cusey. Mm-hmm. At Wells, amazing pasta spot. Amazing pasta, so, really cool. great. It's actually food. so affordable. Mm. It is actually yeah, it's really affordable. Yeah, most really for Covent Garden as well. I know. Mm. Central. Central. Coffee Bills G, for breakfast. Like no, actually, breakfast that was the first like I would, like that was the first like <laughs> that was the first time I had like food and I was like, this is good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is when I was Bills in London, it was really really mm. good. So mm. like, and the thing I found really vibrant about London is the fact that there's so many high quality experiences mm. at like a really good price mm. Mm. but you never really think about it you're like yo I'm just about to have like pasta made mm. by mm. someone who's gotten the training actually from Italy like the original yeah, the authentic experience mm. Mm. at a price point that's not like yeah. super exorbitant when mm. here in Kenya to have the same experience you'd pay an arm and a leg mm. 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 so yeah so thank you girls for well, that not well, to make people hungry if you're watching this at lunchtime um, <laughs> so um. how me and Becky met so <laughs> I was, the way I was like yeah God, it was 98 <laughs> yeah. Uh, cold cold January morning mm. yeah. and mum said oh, I'm having a baby <laughs> <laughs> and I said, here I come. Yeah, and then uh, then you were born. Here I am. And then I think I met Tati through family, friends as well. Did we meet before we met? Why did that no, sound so no, weird? <laughs> no, we met at the same time. At the you same were at time? our uncle's house. That was the first what? time. Yeah. I don't think you were there. I don't think I was there. there. Also, yeah, I met you first. Yeah. So you stole yeah. my friend is what we're saying. Ah. That's, that's what we're saying. Much yeah. younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so we always start at the start because mm-hmm. um, obviously people are like, okay, we're talking about you being from the UK, etc. But you guys look very Kenyan. So what's that's the beginning? Thing. What's the beginning, guys? Bening. The beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. Um, well, I'm half Kenyan, half Zambian. Right. right. Uh, but I was born in London. And mm-hmm. that's about it mm-hmm. for my origin story. <laughs> story. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but come back to Kenya like every year, sometimes twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, Becky. How? Where, where did you um, grow up? I grew up in the UK as well, born and bred in uh, Banbury, Oxfordshire. And yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was yeah, I come to Kenya like for Christmas, and I was here at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so now you guys are full time content creators. Yes. So we want the conversation yeah, today to be about like how that journey's been. Mm-hmm. Um. So clearly, don't talk about your childhood. So. <laughs> okay, Stephen. <laughs> so um. Being content creators now and mm-hmm. sort of knowing each other and like working together, how have you got to the place where you're now doing content full time? I believe both of you, right? Mm. Yeah. How's that journey been as a two content creators? How do you start long. that? Yeah. A very long journey. How many yeah. years? A lot of like doing things for free. Mm-hmm. That's what it's been. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but yeah, a definitely. Lot of free work. I mean, I think you've been doing it full time longer than I have. Mm. I've only been doing it full time from September 2022. So not that long not even a full Mm -hmm. year now but as you said just like so many years of doing things for free not even intending it to be like a full-time thing Mm -hmm. just as like a hobby Mm -hmm. and then recently it's like oh okay maybe this could be like something something Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. yeah then you get your first check yeah, and, and you're like, like, oh, yeah. I'm getting paid for this. You're like, paid. Yeah. I will continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's, there's yeah. a context to that conversation that I think we need to like rewind for a second, mm-hmm. um, which is the, your education. Right. Because like when I look at your content, guys, go check out that content online. Rebecca, uh, I am. I am in karate. That's, that's who she is. And? Tati Kapaya. Yeah. Uh, if you follow those pages, you'll be able to see kind of the, the content that just blew my mind. Um spending so much time in the UK and, and like just seeing it in the context of other content creators. And it's very clear to me that there's either a perspective mm-hmm. or an academic background that justifies the quality and the thinking mm. behind like the content that you make. Thank you. So I want yes. So I want us to like just dial it back a bit. Yeah sure. And start from where what's your educational background? Um, in the UK. Oh, wow. Oh, do you want to yeah. go? Okay, I'll go All first. All right, so... No, okay, yeah, uh, you go first. Okay, cool. <laughs> I've got the classic, I've got GCSEs. Uh, I did art at GCSE, so I've always, like, done something creative. Um, and then I wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. Um, Wait, what? No, <laughs> how are you <laughs> just getting, this out? How do you not know this? <laughs> That's why I did chemistry. <laughs> oh, well, you learn something new every day. <laughs> so anyway, my lifelong dream of being a doctor was crushed um, when I failed chemistry. Um, mm-hmm. And then I was thinking about like what I could do as a creative uh, university course mm-hmm. that was also like a practical course. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to do interior design, but then my parents said no. So I was told do architecture instead. And then if you want to do interior design, go into that afterwards. So then I did architecture at 
Saint Saint Martin's. Say it again, yeah. please. That is what yeah. I wanted to hear. Things we yeah, love yeah. to see. Yeah. 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 Saint Saint Martin's yeah. Yeah. University of the Arts, London. Yeah. Yeah. Saint Saint Martin's King Cross. Yeah. Um, so I did mm. architecture. Um, and while I was doing architecture, I was creating content. Yeah. Um, most of the time, like on the side. Then I graduated. Um, and then there were no graduate jobs. Mm -hmm. Like when I was searching in London during COVID, because I graduated in 2020. Um, and so I was creating content while I was in lockdown. Continued doing that. And then I started getting paid a nice amount, 2021. Um, and now 2022, uh, I signed with an agency. And here I am. Wow. We love to see it. What a journey. What a journey. What a journey. I have loved watching your growth over the last Thank few years. Thank you so much. Really great. Um, <laughs> for me, um, same, did GCSEs. Um, I was very, like, scientific um, in my education, I guess. Like, for A-levels, I did maths, further maths, physics, economics, because I loved physics. Did further maths. Yeah. yeah, I loved physics and maths. Mm. Um, and Jeez. then I did really badly in my A-levels, actually. And then mm. I went to university, did computer science, um, and then I hated that after a year. So I swapped and did television and broadcasting because I've always been interested in film, TV, being creative, editing, because I was making videos before then. I started making YouTube videos when I was in uh, sixth form. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I finished that degree and then I went straight on to do a master's in digital marketing at King's College London and then just graduated. Well, I haven't even graduated, yeah. but um, I, when, when this is out, I will graduate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And then, um, yeah, I was creating content, mainly lifestyle, like around my university life. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, spend the day with me in uni, um, how to be productive, that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's where I kind of went into the whole travel and lifestyle thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's like my educational background, I guess. Wow, that's incredible. Mm. So transferable skills, right? So mm. your academia seems to have sort of played a part, like going into digital and stuff. 100%. So uh, to now to have sustainable content over a long period of time, you have YouTube channel, you have a podcast, you have IG. And TikTok and Pinterest. And TikTok and yeah. Pinterest, shout <laughs> Pinterest specifically. Um, so how do you like plan that to make it sustainable as a student and then also as now a job so okay yeah so whilst i was in uni i was definitely in my toxic productivity swing i didn't really have a work-life balance so in terms of balancing everything i was just working all the time so mm. nine to five i would be doing uni maybe even more than that to be fair mm. and then around that i was creating content about my life i think that's the only way i managed to balance it because mm. if i was doing for example i don't know cooking content yeah. I think it would be difficult to find time to also shoot that on the mm. side. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think I'm a very motivated and driven person anyway. So I think that definitely helped. Um, yeah. Mm. But I don't think I had like a good balance. So I don't know if I'm the right person to mm -mm. ask yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. Toxic. Yeah. But the word toxic with productivity, sometimes people are like, that doesn't add. Productivity it is adds, good. It adds. So what does that look like when you're in that toxic era? Um, burning out. Like I, I thought burning out was just like being tired. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then I was like, this is really impacting my physical health. Right. So yeah. that, yeah, burning out um, affects your mental health, your mood. Mm -hmm. I feel like I wasn't a very fun person to be around. Like Becky knows, like mm -hmm. during my master's degree, I was mm -hmm. so stressed all the time yeah. and I did not take any time to just look after myself. Mm -hmm. People say like, oh, self-care, like take a bath but once you've burnt out you can't just like take a bath and then you're fine yeah so it was just like constantly just yeah mm. so i'm still not out of it but i think mm. you know 2023 2023 mm. yes. so, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> but, yeah yeah becky content calendars and planning mm -hmm. now with an agency yes and you have somebody that's literally said i'm giving you these deals yeah how are you going to schedule these four clients mm -hmm. to give them like three reels in a month like yeah. how does that look in terms of planning your um honestly like for the beginning of the year i was super organized when it came to like knowing exactly what's going out knowing exactly like how to manage each content each contract like each piece of content going out um and like i had it in like a google calendar um so i kind of put it in what i'm going to post when i'm going to post it then my organic content mm -hmm. so my and my team is in that um calendar so my, my manager and then there's another girl who works on the gifting mm -hmm. so they were in my calendar and they'd mm -hmm. see everything um, but I feel like, not to sound cocky, but like you kind of get into the rhythm of it. And you don't yeah. need to keep noting it down. Mm -hmm. Like I remember the live dates. I remember the preview dates. And the great thing about having an agency is they help you so much in that they give you so much direction because mm -hmm. they have their own way of doing things. Mm -hmm. You then kind of slot into that. Mm -hmm. So for example, they write out all my campaigns, the live date, preview date, um, deadlines, things like that. They even put like status. So like 
um, awaiting content, mm -hmm. content approved, content live, ad mm -hmm. stats. This is on Google. This is on Google, Google Sheets. Sheets okay. So yeah. I won't lie, like after I want to say about six months, like my first six months of the agency, I like now from like six months after that to now, I've really just kind of looked at how they're doing it and just reference mm -hmm. what they give me because mm -hmm. it kind of just fits into my lifestyle every day mm -hmm. like posting every day and then i just look at the calendar I'm like oh that's going like okay cool and you just remember mm -hmm. and i think because i've been creating content for so long now that i have someone who tells me when something needs to go live i'm like oh that's gonna go live anyway yeah mm -hmm. makes, do you know what yeah, i mean because yeah. I, I already have that routine of posting like a story da, 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 so i'm like oh that just slots in mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. so i'm very yeah. like I feel like um, my productivity era, very much beginning of the year, I was like, yeah, I have to do this, this, this. But then it's like, just go with the flow. Yeah. And I'm yeah. less um, kind of obsessed with being productive in terms of like making sure everything goes out at the right time. Mm. Like if it goes out, it goes out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like mm. the ad can move around like with the mm. content on my page ready. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I also want to talk to you about because that's a huge contrast. I don't know, Eli and I, our experience working with agencies, mm. we've never really been given mm. a system and a framework and mm. a way through which to continue like working mm. um what were you doing previously mm -hmm. and what aspects did you improve fundamentally once you joined the agency um i think before i was kind of very i was very stressed in terms of like i really had to chase like a lot and chase a lot of things i didn't want to do in terms of work yeah um and so before then i kind of just like cold email everyone mm -hmm. be like hey would love to work with you i'll take whatever gift you give me blah, blah blah but now that i've joined an agency it's kind of i still do take on gifting but it's like there's this authority figure behind me mm -hmm. that like sets boundaries Absolutely. and yeah and you get a lot more respect Absolutely. so like i feel like my approach to like what I want for myself, my worth has changed so much. Like before I was like, I'll do anything. Like I just want them to notice me. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, okay, an agency has seen my value. Now a brand needs to see my value and that needs to reflect in payment, in mm -hmm. deliverables, in like you respecting my time, like mm -hmm. not asking me for like six reels or something <laughs> in a week. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like that's not respecting my time. Yeah. Whereas before I would be like, yeah, that's fine. Like I'll just do it. Like, you yeah. know, I'll Absolutely. do the work. And I feel like, especially because I'm a, a creator of color, Obviously, I notice that I'm not like working with this brand. Like they don't have someone that looks like me. So I'm like, I'm going to be the first. So I'll do whatever they want me to yeah. do. But now that you have an agency, the agency kind of, it's re it's like having a best friend, yeah. like going in with you and like mm. taking on that role. Like they've got their arm around you. And they're like, mm. no, like they'll go back to the brand. Be like we're not doing this. We want to up the price. They'll talk on your behalf. So I think in terms of the change, it's been like understanding my worth as a creator whereas before i was really just kind of like i'll do anything absolutely yeah yeah so that's true. a that's yeah. a fantastic agency, fantastic honestly. input tati do you have anything to add to that it's so true like I, I i've only been signed to my management for like three months but even just from a negotiation standpoint when talking to brands the number of times brands when i wasn't signed would come to me and say oh your fees are too high this yeah. that and the other mm -hmm. my management will simply just email back and say Tati has other brands that are willing to pay her rates so we're not doing this and they'll come back and say okay we can reallocate the budget like how are you so you they find it quickly they yeah. find the budget so <laughs> quickly yeah. so yeah. I think and also I was talking to Becky about this the other day like I think um, our managements are both quite diverse in terms yeah. of the creators they manage and um, I think it's no secret that black creators get paid less than white mm -hmm. creators. Um, so, it's no secret, you said. Yeah, it's no, no secret. Yeah. Like it, it's, everyone knows that. Everyone, yeah, most people know this. Um, so the, my manager manages loads of white creators, for example, mm -hmm. and she'll be pitching me to brands, obviously using the same rates that she would use with a white creator and the brand is complaining and she's wondering like why this is literally just like a standard rate and they're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I think just like in that sense of things, like um, it's been helpful to just have them to advocate for you. You don't really have to stress because you know they're mm -hmm. working behind the scenes. I think before I was really stressed, like what deals am I going to do? Like you said, I'm just going to do anything so that I can work and get paid and stuff like that. But now it's kind of like you can take a, yeah. breather mm. and just know you're gonna work it's so fine mm. there's, um, always, work coming. there's always work coming mm. so yeah yeah you becky you mentioned having a the agency being like a best friend right mm. and having that kind of reference point because i know we talk quite a lot when content's happening but i feel like now you and tatty mm. have got much closer because you're doing the same kind of uh job mm. so how important has that support system been having somebody to reference and go back and forth with as it's 
wow really <laughs> the same yeah, yeah, movement yeah, yeah. the same movement how's how has that been like what are the what are the things that you guys kind of encourage each other and what kind of information do you exchange so you can get better outputs um i'd say like now that she's signed as well mm. um we can have like really good conversation like about like we tell each other like anecdotes like oh so you know like they don't want to pay me this much so and mm. she'll be like oh yeah so that this this and it's nice to have like someone else to have that conversation with i thought of a really great example oh yeah so becky saw an ad of me <gasps> on mm. a social media site mm. for a brand that i had received gifting from and made a video mm -hmm. and um they had approached me and said hey can we use your video um for like paid advertising and i was like um here are my rates mm. for that and um, they were like oh don't worry like we're not going to do this like if we share it it'll just be like an organic thing and i was mm -hmm. like yeah so fine share it organically mm, yeah. whatever mm -hmm. and then she sees it as a paid ad and she's like, hey, look who I saw. I was like, yeah, and I was get like, the bag, sis. I was like, oh, I got no bag, yeah. first of all. <laughs> bag was empty. And they said they weren't going to do this. Yeah. So just even things like that. She was like, you need to tell your manager ASAP. Mm. They shouldn't have done this. This is low-key illegal. What did, yeah. what, did they, what, did you, what did what did they do? What did you do about that? I told happening? my management and they're handling it. Nice. But like, just stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have known. I would have just seen that and been like, oh, okay. I was like, that's so not I did okay. it anyway. Yeah. But um, they're like whitelisting her content, like everywhere, all over a certain app um, <laughs> and it's like that's not okay if you had the money to spend to do mm. this on an app on an ad on this app which is not cheap mm. then why couldn't that money go to her pocket when you're using her likeness it's yeah. literally illegal it yeah. is legal. like yeah. it's yeah. so illegal yeah. yeah and it's the fact that like i know for a fact they wouldn't do that to a and white influencer white because yeah. i've seen the way they work with like white influencers and the same brand mm. gifted me and i told her this i was like they actually gifted me something mm. um and like one it was delayed like they're like yeah we'll get this out to you and again when it comes to gifting because it's i think this is a very important thing to, to note is that we're not like saying we're ungrateful but gifting is a part of like the job mm. so when a brand reaches out and they're like we'd love to give to you like oh that's amazing so when it comes you're like you assess you're like okay what can i do with this how does this fit into my content mm. um so now when i'm saying it's delayed it's that i was now ex planning content to shoot with it mm. but it'd been like three weeks so i'm like oh mm. it's getting a bit late like what i had in mind like i wanted to get yeah. some content out before christmas mm. um so they sent it to me late number one like um the girl on the team there's <laughs> someone who's in charge of gifting um so she obviously liaise liaises with the brands and sorts out gifting so she was like okay um i was like they haven't sent it she's like oh well, let me follow up then it's like there the next day so mm. they've just forgotten about me but right. other content creators that i follow received. had already received their gifting really nice packaging way more product like they limited the product they gave me mm. and i was like so if this is how they're treating gifting i'm not surprised they did the same thing to tatty when like even gifting yeah. which is like the beginning of the relationship yeah. is completely different yeah. between me and a white influencer yeah and I, it's not even like they said we would love for you to make content i literally just did a oh, I, i'm gonna give away no no i just made a video oh. organically mm. right. like yeah. with no intention of them even necessarily doing anything with it mm. which is what hurt more I, I was like this was just for fun for me yeah. being honest I was yeah. just be giving my honest reviews mm. Mm. these kind of, these kind of lessons um, I feel you because we've been in a, I'll call it abusive relationships as well you really um, haven't how, what would you <laughs> what did you say <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> I said you really have been like the stories you're telling me is just yeah, yeah, ridiculous yeah, yeah, we, yeah we're going through it too yeah we've, we've yeah. been going through it sorry what, yeah what, so what like if you were to because now I think you're in quite a nice pocket like you've been signed you're getting good relationships sustainable you finish education and now it's like I can do something I'm really enjoying if you were to now talk to yourself <laughs> like three years earlier uh, when you're in that stage where you're like just starting out these sort of things are happening you don't have much information what mm -hmm. encouragement would you give yourself and what would you tell yourself mm -hmm. as principles to stay the course because there might be people watching that are at that stage now yeah and you're on the other side so what would you tell your younger three years three years ago um, what so, in terms of content creation yeah in terms of content creation yeah like um Number one, fifty pounds is not. <laughs> that's not a rate that you should ever accept <laughs> for anything. Like right. it should be never. Mm. Um, and like, yeah, I think it's about knowing your worth mm. the whole time. How do you figure out your worth, though? I. It's just. It's about like uh, again. I think the sad thing is like it kind of is sort of validation situation mm. for me anyway. It's been seeing that oh okay, if they're willing to pay, mm. then I am worth something. My content mm. is worth something. If you're asking me to come on board to do something, then yeah. I am worth something. Like, my content mm. is worth something. Mm. And then, like, seeing 
now when like somebody dms you like oh my god i saw your video and then i decided to try this outfit and i feel really good in it like mm-hmm. i would never wear like a skirt but mm-hmm. like your video like that means that something my content has provided mm-hmm. something of worth to someone else i'm Absolutely. like oh okay so it's definitely like for me unfortunately it's like an external validation which isn't always amazing but because content is mostly external and yeah. perceived by others mm-hmm. that's kind of the only way to gauge how worthwhile it is mm. that's that's what i would say like learn your worth from the content like your mm. content is worth something to someone somewhere yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i think also the consistency mm. i think it can be really difficult to give up um if you're not seeing people resonate with your content mm. or you're not reaching the audiences you think you should be reaching mm. um but like we've said many times the growth, the slower it is, the more consistent it is, it's mm. probably better in the long run because it means you'll be able to keep that audience mm. engaged for a long period of time instead mm. of just for maybe a year or two. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think I would say just like keep consistent. If you're doing it because you enjoy it, that's the best thing because yeah. mm. you'll always be having a good time. Mm. Um, and if, you know, the money will come if you want to make it a full-time job. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but yeah, just keep consistent, keep learning, mm. um, perfecting your craft, mm. Um, mm. if that's the sort of thing. Because I know some people don't really like uh, have like a craft per se. Yeah, yeah. Some people are really into fashion, so keep learning about fashion. Some people mm. like editing, so keep learning about that. But like mm. some people don't really care. So, you know, do you mm. too? Must be nice. No. Must be nice. <laughs> All right, so follow up question. Um, no follow up, but I think like taking you back again because I feel like there's a lot of assumptions um, mm. because we're so familiar with each other. Yeah. Oh. Um, one would be how did you get from the point from taking your 50 pounds <laughs> to management and to finding an ag- agency that fits for you mm-hmm. as a password of color because I feel like it sounds like these people are really prioritizing you and understand where you're vulnerable and are mm-hmm. doing the work to kind of make sure that those vulnerabilities are not exploited. Whereas mm. as I've come to discover Page. come on um there are agencies that see a vulnerability and go exploit that mm. for our own personal gain mm. we are going to exploit the fact that there's an there's an information gap yes and then we are going to price you know we're going to make you price low and then mm. reserve that profit to pay rent in our own homes mm. <clears throat> now mm. Mm. Uh, and it's a delicious thing when you do you can say these things without consequence yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Um, so I want to know that difference, like what is the difference in attitude and mentality in that team in recruiting you? And how did they spot and find you as being talented people of color in the UK? Mm. I know with with my management, I had been following them for a while, for maybe mm. like a year before I was signed with them. Yeah. And um, they are kind of like a boutique agency, so they don't yeah. have like hundreds and hundreds of clients. Yeah. Um, and I think, I don't know, in terms of the pricing thing, I remember going to them um, with my rates because they obviously ask like how much you normally charge. Yeah. And we were on our first call and one of my managers was like, first of all, you're charging way too low. Mm. And I remember when I was writing it out, I was like, they're going to think I'm taking the piss. Like yeah. These rates yeah. are way too high. Yeah. And she was yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, how yeah. have you been doing this? Like, how have brands been exploiting you like this? Mm. Um, so she was like, just going to be completely honest. You're charging way too low. Mm. This won't be able to run from now. And even brands that I've had relationships with in the past who I've kind of had ongoing relationships with, they've gotten back in touch and been like, hey, we'd love to do this again mm. at this rate. And I'm like, oh, actually I have management now, so can mm. you go yes, to, over to price. them? That must feel nice, huh? And they're like, mm. it's like a really big, like intense conversation. Like, oh, but we've had this long relationship and they're like, yeah, but you're exploiting her. So yeah. it's, yeah. I don't know. I think it's just luck, honestly, that mm. they are tr- like trustworthy and honest and yeah. they have integrity. Because I don't know, I don't know, what do you think? Um, I think the thing I was saying about integrity, like there are agencies out there, like I've heard some horror stories, like what's going on in America right now. Mm. There's literally an agency that's been targeting black women and stealing money from them, really? specifically <laughs> uh, creators of colour. So we're very lucky that we have an agency that's like not taking our money, not like giving us like false fees and things like that. Yeah. Mm. False fees? Talk like, a bit about that. A false fee. Like for example, like they'll say, hey, like we negotiated and this is the best we can do. Like we can't give you any more. Like this is the only, this is only how much the brand has in reality. Mm-hmm. They don't. Mm. This is what the guy was doing at this agency. So he was basically lying, saying they could only give you this much. So it is illegal. 
they're false. Forcing... Pretty sure that's illegal. Like, mm. yeah, if the brand has. <laughs> but then again, th- th- sorry, but then again, it's like if the person doesn't know, then I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how it really works in terms of like lying to your own client mm. about the money. Mm. Mm. But I mean, uh, but who's the client in this circumstance? What do you mean? Like, is the creator the client of the agency? Both. Because yeah. it's like you have the client, the brand client, and you have the client, which is your creator. Mm. So if you're lying to like the creator saying the client, this client only has this much, and then now you lie to your client, which is the creator. And you take advantage of the arbitrage opportunity and save that for rent. Then yeah. it becomes, yeah. Yeah. say it again, illegal. It's yeah. called a I false. I, I don't think you that's... False that's fee. No, I'm, I just was saying like a it, false fee in terms but, of like... But, but, like, but like it's really... But We're it's not really, lawyers, please. No, <laughs> but I am. But I am. Right. Yeah, but I am. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that like... It's not it, making I, law. No, but... Uh, listen, not like, lawyers. <laughs> yeah. <AOC. Yeah. laughs> but like, but like, but like, here's the thing, right? That's the thing that most people... Mm. It's an agency mm. and there, it's not just, it's an agency because the agency really, an agency relationship exists between the influencer and the agency. Mm-hmm. And the agency also has an, an agency relationship between the client mm-hmm. and the agency. And that's mm-hmm. how I've always been wondering. That's why I've always been wondering. Mm. Isn't it illegal contractually mm. Mm. to like, con- to like lie to this client yeah. that this one is paying this much mm. yeah. and then make, take advantage of the difference. It should yeah. be, yeah. Because yeah. A you're, cli- you're not a broker, you're mm. a client relationships person. Yeah, so if, like, it's bro- if it's a brokerage, that's fine. Mm. Like you, that's how people make their money in the middle. But if you've literally said, I'm going to be getting you work and you told this piece of people, I'm going to get you a client, mm. then you should all be CC'd in the same yeah. thing. You should yeah. all be seeing the negotiation. But, but the that's jump. the thing, like, should influencer marketing in Kenya then mm. become a th- become a thing where the influencer tells the agent mm. the yeah the marketing agency saying mm. we're going to enter a partnership between me and you because that's what you have which mm-hmm. is so, it's an they, agency relationship so like there's this like manage so are we talking about because yeah. there's different types of agencies right there's yeah. the agency where they manage uh, influencers like you're managed by them they take a percentage of each deal mm-hmm. yeah. then there's agency that just has clients and reaches out to multiple influencers, influencers. that are not signed but yeah. they just give you contact give you contract which is yeah. what the case is more here there's not as much management for influencers like you're signed to with a percentage yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. so, so that's the difference mad. yeah mm-hmm. that's wow. which is the difference because like right now mm-hmm. because like right now what you've just said well, for me was like that sound that doesn't sound like marketing yeah. agency to mm-hmm. me it sounds like that's talent management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are yeah. The talent management. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that happens here. Like, it's it's no secret. The agency where you've got the client and you're giving the influencer less than what the client's actually budget is, mm. that's like the reoccurring theme here. Yeah. But it, when it's a real problem is if you're actually signed Print. and they're yeah. supposed to be bringing you income and uplifting the kind of income you're getting from clients, then they're cutting cutting your checks. That's mm. when it's actually a that's problem. Sure. Yeah. But I think most agencies don't obviously... They don't obviously... The they budget. don't even enter that relationship. Yeah, they don't, yeah. They, they don't even... Because what they do is they just give you a contract to do the work. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you're an independent consultant. And you do the work. Yeah. Yeah, whatever rate you give me is fine. Is that, yeah. Yeah. I don't owe you a monthly... I don't monthly owe you a monthly pay from, or... Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, that's a difference. Sorry think, for interrupting. No, sorry. You're done. What was I saying? Oh, and then we were talking about um, how my agency found me. Um, so I actually follow a lot of their talent. So I've been following a lot of their talent for like years. And I like we end up following each other back, me and other talents. Um, and we end up like, liking each other's pictures, supporting each other's content. So I think them like supporting my content, reposting it, put me on their radar. Mm. Because like when obviously she reached out, I was like, send agency. I've been, I've when she reached out, mm-hmm. you can cut the bit. Barrel, yep. Um, so yeah, when she reached out, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I've seen this like agency's like name in everyone's like bio," and mm. I was like, "Oh, I know this is thingy, this is thingy," and I'm like, "Oh, they must have seen me through their profile when they mm. repost me." So that's how they found me. Um, so yeah, that just to answer the question of how my mm. management found me. perfect time for you guys to ask us your questions that you prepared 
Hmm. Yeah. That tattoo See, prepared. I feel that like <laughs> I feel like my stuff. questions have absolutely nothing to do with the trajectory of the conversation yeah, we've been having. No, but that's fine. That, that was we could ask you industry questions, I guess. Then no, we could just go off the bat. We don't okay. have to stick Were to. You staring at my phone. I was trying to. I was trying to see. I was trying to Yeah. 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 Wow, yeah. Sneaky. <laughs> Um, okay, I have one question which I'm very excited to ask. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, if you guys were to write a book, mm -hmm. what would the book be about? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this a funny I don't question? Know. I'm like, what's... It's another so chapter in our story. Chapter eight, reparations. Chapter eight, reparations. <laughs> 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 so good. Okay, uh, so, me, so me, so me, and Eli have, me and Eli I'm have like, this thing where when we go through like phases because i feel like the <laughs> development of this podcast has had phases oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> yeah. you guys have been through the mail yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 the development of this podcast has had phases including yesterday um mm. Mm. um and every time we're going through one of those phases we usually go it's okay it's gonna be another, just another chapter in the book okay. just another chapter yeah, yeah. Just, another chapter. just another chapter in the mm. book because mm. like a lot of what we do has no role models okay mm. There's no one who's kind of trying, at least in the context of where we are, to push the needle for um, positively podcasting um, about certain very, very sensitive, but very, very impactful topics mm. as much as we're trying to do it. Mm -hmm. And so when we find ourselves in rooms where you'd expect to find support and you find um, reluctance or doubt or who the hell do these guys think disrespect. they are? Disrespect. Dis disrespect, yeah. 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 Um, or you find that you're working with people who you expect to have a fundamental understanding of what mm. you're doing, and then you find that, no. Nope. Mm. Um, yet again, you're surrounded with the incompetence of mm. some level. Mm. 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 Or you find that the people who you'd think would not know or care much about what you do are the ones who care the absolute yeah. most mm. yeah. and invest so much of their time and effort into you mm -hmm. to the point that it's a, it's a, it's a surprising thing. Mm. Mm. We kind of note it down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a moment by moment thing. Okay. Um, and definitely, I think it would be in the best interest of, you know, even the people who watch us and have followed us through this journey from the beginning mm -hmm. to at least give back by writing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the, the main pillars for us is we are a service, right? Yeah. Like we find the conversation we have, bringing people like you is a service to people watching. Mm -hmm. So whenever we're going for that, the, those stuff, we're like, it's okay, we're going through it. So like the next, next guy's podcaster done. that's now 16, that wants to start a podcast at 18, mm -hmm. doesn't have to have the same disrespect that have yeah. the same issues with rates mm -hmm. because we've gone through it and we've kind of tried to set an industry standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been talking to some of our partners and some of our complaints to them was like, okay, I don't think you're doing enough for this market. And I was saying, literally we don't have a model mm. to go off. Mm. So you guys are the ones that are going to be the forefront. Yeah. Like, and we always equate it to, you know, when hip hop started, right? Mm -hmm. Like back in America. And then you had like Rock Nation, you had Kanye, J. Mm -hmm. They was being like, okay, let's go independent. Okay, let's start my own label. Let's sign artists. Mm -hmm. Dame Dash saying, let's make sure I'm paying the artists what they should be paid. It's the same, not to call ourselves Jay-Z, but it's the, it's the same kind of thing where you're in an industry mm -hmm. where nothing's uh, moved in that space. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the book would essentially be a handbook mm. and a kind of biography yeah. of our journey. And in that journey, there'll be practical gems like mm. this yeah. percentage, this percentage, this work works. this way, maintain yeah. relationships like this. Yeah. That's that's what the book, it'll be man talk moments, I think. I don't even call it that. What would you call it, bud? The voice that sends invoices. Hey! <laughs> God, the voice that sends <laughs> yeah, but, but no, but like, but like yeah. legit, just to add a bit more bone to that, mm. um, having gone to the UK and having seen how developed the creative economy is over there, mm -hmm. because the UK has a very strong understanding of intellectual property rights. Yes. Like, and it's like executed at a very high level mm -hmm. to the point that, you know, when you see your face on a website that's not supposed to be there, you feel alarmed. You're like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. I have image rights. There's an awareness. There's a commercial awareness that that population has mm -hmm. um, because entertainment is something and intellectual property and the creative economy, arts, video games, all these things mm -hmm. come um, have a structure but when you come to Africa mm -hmm. how we buy playstations is through imports through different countries mm -hmm. how we buy movies mm -hmm. is a lot of how we consume our content might be through pirated means mm -hmm. how we deal with marketing is like we want to go traditional as much as we can because mm -hmm. there's still that fact that there's a lot of people who still don't have access to the technologies that we do mm -hmm. so it's a very different market mm -hmm. yeah. so mm -hmm. when you're doing something like podcasting mm -hmm. which is essentially an audio format IP product mm -hmm. um, in the creative economy 
that doesn't have much visibility, there's a lot of people who are very, very exploitative. They mm -hmm. take advantage of the fact that there's people who are really good at what they do mm -hmm. and they don't know that they're good at what they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 For example, like for my talk, what I've realized is that, um, and we had this issue in, in a certain meeting, the we have pushed the needle to become as much a high quality podcast as it is globally. Mm -hmm. That right now, if we take this, we edit and we put it anywhere in the world, okay. I believe you can watch this. The statistics are yeah. telling us that. 100%. Yeah. 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 But like a lot of people are doing things that are similar to us here in Kenya mm -hmm. and across Africa, mm -hmm. but they don't know that that's the quality of work they're putting out right. because the market isn't pricing it. Yeah. No yeah. one's pricing that because no. you're like, you're still sending the 50 pounds, mm -hmm. but you're going through on a thousand pound expenditure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like sure. that book would also tell you, or if we put out that work, um, would also tell you like when you hit this level mm -hmm. know that this is your worth now mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. don't compromise about it don't let anyone doesn't matter how big you are as a brand or whatever mm -mm. Mm -hmm. put I'm gonna put you on a contract and I'm gonna make sure that you do what you need to do yeah to yeah. go right by um the team so like that's yeah kind of yeah the point was yeah. definitely proven uh, a few months ago where just on my personal page I started talking about rate cards yeah and yeah, I, I was that. just say I was just Iconic. saying okay guys uh, anonymously tell me how much your following is as a, just a basic stat and how much you charge for each deliverable. Mm. And what we noticed from that is there is a massive thirst for knowledge. So the market, I think, it's been a good year, generally 2022 mm. for content creators, but I think sometimes the markets move, the quality of works moved so fast, mm. but the information hasn't moved at the same pace. Mm. And even the, the IP rights, et cetera, I had mm. conversations with brands and they're trying to get me to like sign my image for like nothing. Yeah. I'm like, no, this, this doesn't it's run. But they're like, yeah, but no one else is asking for this. <laughs> yeah, so it means, so it means yeah. unless you have the information, you're not going to ask the right questions and you're going to be signed into something. Exactly. Perfect example is if you now put your image with a brand, yeah. you've not put a time cap and a renewal mm. then the brand has like a huge scandal and they keep using your image there's nothing you can they do you haven't exactly. signed that so it's those kind of things that i think hopefully in the next few years that this, the market's going to catch up to where we are creatively mm. but at the moment just from seeing the responses i got online and yeah. the conversation we had yeah. on a live guys are working at a high level but they don't have yeah. the information here's here's a, seeing, just, you know, mm. here's, here's, here's something that was impressive about that data that i just found like absolutely crazy mm. There was a disparity between someone. There's someone who's getting paid 1.1 1 .1, um, million shillings, which is around eleven thousand mm. dollars, with like a million followers or like around a million followers. And there's someone who's at five hundred thousand and being paid three hundred dollars. Huh? Yeah. Do, do, yeah. I don't, some of them. The were, data I, my is, jaw was dropping. Yeah. The, yeah. For me, it was the variance. It's mm. like. Hmm. It's, it's unless it's not their full time so, job yeah. that is just yeah. Yeah. so what happens there is now if that disparity is there it means there's somebody that's eating that gap eating that gap yeah yeah wow that's insane because there's no because there's no information there's no one who's providing consistent information and mm. reporting about mm. the influencer market here mm. and here's another thing of how badly that kind of have, might even be affecting the economy mm. globally the creative economy according to Ungtat I was doing some research on it mm. um, just because of kind of the space we are um, so they do a lot of reporting on this. So they have this annual report called the Creative Economy Report, which was for 2021, I believe, or 2022. Mm. No, it was for 2021. They were saying the world, the total, the net worth of the creative economy in the world right now is about $1.1 trillion. Mm. The T. Okay. Wow. Not yeah. T. Yeah, yeah. Mm. $1.1 trillion. Wow. Yeah. Realize that the entire African continent, given its intellectual property problems, given the fact that there's not much data collection going on about creative, the creative economy, given the fact that artists, creatives are not necessarily understanding monetization methods, mm -hmm. are not included. They've mm -hmm. not, that, that slice mm -hmm. of an entire, how many countries, 54 now, mm -hmm. has not been added to that economy. Mm -hmm. So like you might be thinking, mm -hmm. oh, this is the size. But mm -hmm. if we're being honest, the one market that's been least affected by colonialism, racism, and the hatred is the stories African tell, Africans tell. Mm. Like your creative spirit as a continent will not go. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. every scar that's been left on us as Africans mm. um, tells a story. And this is why the two of you mm. 
mm. have a perspective that's richer. For example, Tati's page. Mm. You will see her in Zambia, then you'll see her in Lamu, and you're like, God damn. Mm. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. It slaps. Yeah. Yeah. Or you'll see Becky, mm. you know, showing me that willow tree in Kent six that's different it. times. That's <laughs> it. It's where I live. Yeah, and then, and then suddenly <laughs> she's like on a thou in yeah. Lamu. Then you see, that's like, yeah. unfortunately, the creator who is not of color mm. will show me Kensington 50 times and there's another one who also oh, we can't see Notting Hill yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> even I got like, seen Notting Hill like, <laughs> you're seeing I, even me I saw that shepherd's bush I saw it I saw Knightsbridge I was like I've seen it a million times the same way yeah. um, mm. so like I feel like mm. that creative um, to tie it back is mm. that you you are essentially exporting and importing culture Mm. Wow, that's such yeah. an amazing way to put it. Yeah. yeah. How do you guys stay motivated and creative? Because I know it comes to a point where you've got a really cool brief and they're like, mm. this is what you want to um, communicate. Mm. And they'll do it in your style, you know, because you do it in a certain way. Yeah. And maybe some days you're like, I don't, I don't really want to make a reel. Yeah. So what are like practical things you do or say to yourself? Do you have mantras? Mm. Do you meditate? What do you do as a creative to keep the juices flowing? Yes. Um, Give us some of that central St. Martin secrecy. Yeah. The first thing I do is I check the brief and then I go under that and I check the fee and I say, that's what I'm doing it for. Um, <laughs> let's let's be real here. Um, I'm a Capricorn. You know what I mean? um, I'm dying here. <laughs> let's be real. Um, so yeah, the first thing I do is check how much I'm being paid, um, and obviously, like, you, like I know we're joking, but like, I'm not gonna do something for nothing. So true. So yeah. and like, I look at the money. I'm like, that is part of something that is part of something bigger like that money will go some will go to my savings some will go to my everyday like this is real life mm. so whatever you ask me to do is my real life like I will be compensated for the work I do so that number one is a big motivator and then after that to stay creative and like get the juices flowing whatever I go back to my best performing content mm. and I've noticed like I was actually telling Tati this yesterday um for example, I started switching up um, my reels um, to being just, instead of me just standing there like changing outfits, because I'm not like a huge transition person. Like, mm. I'm not about to jump and then land again. And, and, Nothing like, wrong with that. Sometimes you want to. No, I'm just saying, like, it's not my thing. And also, I record on an iPhone, so you are mm. technically limited to mm. an extent. Um, it doesn't seem like it. No. So, yeah. So then I decided, I was like, okay, how can I make this more interesting? Um, so I started incorporating different angles. It's the same thing. I'm getting ready, but how can I make it more interesting? Because we're, the thing with uh, content I think this year I've seen is we are all doing the same thing at some point mm. and we need to switch up. <laughs> so like mm. as a fashion content creator, do you know how many fashion content creators there are like yeah. in the world, it, let alone in the UK? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. so I need my content to be a bit different on mm. this campaign that I'm doing because there's going to be other people on the campaign. Mm. Mm. I don't want our content to look the same and mm. I want the brand number one to repost me mm. uh, and number two for like there to be a good amount of uh, engagement in it. Mm. So I started incorporating like six different angles it's a lot of work um, and like zoom ins and everything when I'm getting ready for like my get ready with me reels so mm -hmm. I found that like going back and seeing that oh when I switched up the angles it did really well mm -hmm. when I made it 15 seconds it did really well how mm -hmm. can I do that again make it different add a little bit of spark mm -hmm. and stay in line with the brief mm -hmm. that's kind of how I stay creative and also checking content on different platforms because a TikTok video like if I take content from there mm. and bring it to Instagram, like it did really well there. Let me see how I can bring that onto another platform, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, like looking at different platforms, looking at different content, yeah. like that's performed well. Mm. Nice. I think for me, with the creativity side of things, I'm I'm really into like the technical side of things. Okay. So I love videography. Mm. So I think I'm always just having to try new things mm. to like be more creative. Like we recently just went to Belgium and um, I was like shooting in a different style like with mm. my camera and stuff I yeah. recently just like upgraded yeah. my kit yeah. I sound it's, it's so insane. dumb it's so good no you don't no. It's it's so, insane. Insane. so like doing yeah. stuff like that and mm -hmm. uh, just like trying different styles um, similar as well like looking back at what's performed well mm -hmm. taking inspiration from that if I'm working with a brand um, hopefully they've given me creative freedom mm -hmm. and um, I'll just try you know forget about the pressure like oh they have to really love this obviously mm. that's like the first thing you think about mm. um i just try to create something that i'm gonna like yeah. and like that i would share organically because a lot of the time mm. they'll pay you to post something on one platform mm -hmm. but with the content that i made in belgium i was mm. like i just want to share this everywhere yeah. like i want everyone to yeah. see this mm. yeah. so yeah i think it's just like really enjoying the process and trying to find new ways to 
get out of the rut because mm-hmm. I think once we find something we know performs well or something we like we have a tendency to oh, just, just keep doing thing, the right? same thing yeah, yeah. but then people might see that get inspiration obviously it's natural that everything kind of becomes homogenous in this it like really has, yeah. industry like mm-hmm. I, I too have noticed it I think I was like ranting mm-hmm. so much to you <laughs> earlier on in the year I was yeah. like Becky Everything is the, the same. same. Yeah. No one is original. Everyone yeah. has the same aesthetic. Yeah. Everyone's talking about, oh, I'm that girl. I'm oh, this. I'm that. It's I mean, like, yeah. who are like? I don't know yeah. anything about like you. You person. are the same as this person exactly. and the same as that person. Yeah. So I think just like forgetting about the pressure of like, oh, I need to fit this trend or mm-hmm. use this trending sounds or like, yeah, mm-hmm. just like being yourself. Yeah, you know, true. and that's just so like true. enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I want something just to add, like a comment. I I saw the the Bruce stuff, man, and. I will not lie. I will not lie. When I, I've never, it was so nice to see two black girls mm. riding a bike. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, just riding, just riding a, bike. a bike, doing like, like, like living. Yep. The, it's luxury is natural. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just doing things. Just doing just things. Just just life. Life. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a museum <sighs> you'd like to you see. Move from the bike. How'd that go for you? Nah, it's it. all right. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all right. All I'll say is, okay, <laughs> Belgium. <laughs> Learn to take care of people <laughs> because the fact they left me on the street, I fell off the bike, <laughs> taking a corner. Okay, by the way, it was cobblestone streets, so wet let's calm down. Yeah, yeah. wet, very slippery. I took the corner, um, and I just went down just completely. Yeah, I was on the ground, um, <laughs> took a few seconds and started laughing, but no one could see I'm laughing, only Tati could really see, mm. barely she could see that I was laughing. <sighs> people just walked past. Wow. No one People even said. Looked and they looked. Past. They watched the whole thing. No one yeah. even said, "Are you okay?" Like at least in London, they'll be like, "Are you okay?" Yeah, like then right, walk off. Yeah, mm. like at least they'll pretend to care. Didn't care. That's yeah. the only like downside in the trip. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Other than that, love a bike ride. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like I was just so impressed by how clean the content looked and how you we talked about. Yeah. You talked about like them. Even I wanted to go there, but like yeah. I have to. I have to do the annoying thing of saying, if I take kind of the kind of fame or the kind of the kind of content that people of color get promoted for on these platforms mm. yes. vis-a-vis the kind of content that I see you guys put out minimalist tasteful mm. luxurious mm. absolutely oh, you know. just wife. top tier <laughs> yeah like I, I said billionaire's so. wife content yeah. like, that's all I can do yeah mm. like <laughs> what like so how like... has the market reacted to that that's the first question I want to know mm-hmm. and I was yeah, how has the market reacted to that? Because for me, I was just like very impressed. Um, and how has like agency treated you mm. because of that? Mm. Um, thank you. I think with the whole like black girl luxury um, mm. hashtag or like that sort of demographic, yeah. it's received in, I feel like the main emotion is shock. Yeah, It's like, wait, mm. what? Like mm. you guys can do nice things. Mm. You guys are like, just like having a fun experience yeah like i think that's the main thing i've seen where it's like oh wait what like Mm. it's mainly just like surprise yeah it's like why is this so surprising to you guys that we can just enjoy our time because like like, goodness gracious you just don't see it because it's not the narrative pushed no let let me tell you these girls should be on a european ad or, but the thing is, or, I wouldn't even say or, the content. I feel like the content we share is relatable. Well, I feel like I'm relatable yeah. online in yeah. some in some aspects. Obviously, yeah. I know some things I share aren't so relatable and but, accessible. But, but that's the thing I'm saying. Like it's mm, it's just you. You know, like it's my life. It's, just living yeah, life. Yeah, it's just like you for guys. example, for example, <laughs> the aesthetic of the video in Zambia. Outstanding. Yeah. Zambia. Yeah. Oh, I love Zambia so much. Like, <laughs> l- yeah, let's talk. Like, when I saw that, I was like, mm. this is luxury. Or your aesthetic, mm. whenever you come to restaurants in Nairobi, the chop house. Like, mm. oh, that was a <laughs> story. <laughs> <laughs> you see what you see what that I mean? Don't make me make real. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me get real. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you get what I mean? Like, yeah. the way you portray your experiences as women of color mm. is so delightful mm. like oh, I, thank you so much thank like you. it's and it's so it's totally differentiated from kind of what is promoted so like are you what's your vision for that how do you intend to like push that forward um, um i feel like it's not even a thing where it's a strategic move because as we said we're just living life like when i went to zambia it was just to visit my dad and he was just taking me to these places. Mm. It wasn't like, oh, I need to go to this resort because it's mm. super luxury. Mm. That was just his way of being like, hey, let's just go somewhere nice. Yeah. Mm. It's just mm. 
living life. It's so just you. I intend to just continue my living right my life. Is just my vibe right now is just living life. life. Yeah. Um, I think also like going off this idea of like the black girl luxury hashtag aesthetic, right? I think you guys are saying like, you know, you just don't see it. Mm. All I've seen like in terms of like content growing up, like getting Instagram, TikTok and stuff is just other white girls living their life. They're living their life, mm. Mm. living their best life just mm. every day. And like, oh, that's so nice. Oh, they have such aesthetic homes. Da, 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 da. They just like shot their everyday life. Mm. But I think people forget like ev- black people are not homogenous. Yes. Yeah. We don't like all like not every day is struggle. Yeah. And even yeah. if you are struggling, yeah. It's not your narrative every yeah. day. Like, yeah. it's not everyday top boy. Like, our life isn't top boy. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because people think, oh, like, when someone, like, you tell someone, like, London, they're like, oh, is it, like, top boy? Not, no, no, not, not everywhere. Really. Just went to a like, cafe. Yeah. Just, and it's just like, to watch house. people just yeah. expect black, yeah. the black identity just to be wrapped within trauma wrapped within like suffering mm, yeah. and it doesn't have to be i'm just an i'm just a normal girl mm. um, yeah. i just live with my family mm. a, a, a like mom a dad because mm. that's normal yeah let's yeah. stop pretending like having a mom and dad is normal yeah. like yeah. it's yeah. like all single ha- no my yeah. mom and dad are married they love each other like yeah. happy household my dad yeah. has taken very good care of us like yeah. it's normal yeah and like yeah. i think that's why people are always like oh you can do this yeah because mm. yeah, that's mm. it's not everyday struggle. Like mm. we do have just normal lives, yeah. and this idea that like when we do do something that's what every other person does, it's like black girl luxury. It's not luxury. Yeah. Mm. There is black girl luxury because mm. there are people that live in luxury. Exactly, we are just living in the norm. Yeah, like, because yeah. it's like so not normal to see, right. and people make it such a big deal that like you know mm. our lives are so hard mm. that like when they see it, they're like, oh wow. It's like no, that's just our everyday life, yeah. and we're gonna keep sharing it yeah. to let you know that like it's not everyday struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And someone who I love that does this is Jackie Ina. She is like yeah. another level of luxury right. mm-hmm. but yeah. she's like people comment on her stuff they're like oh like why would you do that she's like what would you ask someone else that would you ask a white woman mm-hmm. doing her laundry like asking her questions mm-hmm. no very true. she's oh, very well yeah. off yeah. and yeah. i love that she's like yeah i am well off exactly yeah. because it's inspiring why shouldn't she, like, why other... shouldn't she show that yeah. 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 yeah yeah and that's what i have to say yes yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what you know what that's what i wanted to really come out mm. because like knowing you both personally mm. this is not an attempt like mm. no. <coughs> sorry mm. yeah, yesterday mm. Um, one of us here walked in with, I believe it was a custard yellow sweater. Yes, yes. Um, half one. sweater. <laughs> I thrifted it actually yeah. from a charity shop. It was like three pounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. sustainable too. Like, yeah. like, and and like this prep, clean fit. Mm. You could you could think this is a girl from Princeton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Princeton. Yeah. Princeton. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or you yeah. know, like Princeton or Yale. Like she just looked like I'm here on holiday in Africa, just mm. enjoy my time. Mm. Like that fit when I saw it, I was like, my goodness gracious me. Mm. Like, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. that. That's normal. Mm. And I feel like the media that's been kind of the media narrative has always been black means struggle, Mm. black means difficulty, Mm. black means shallow. And what was it? Um, Like ratchet. Yeah. Shallow. And there's a word superficial. Mm. Um, Like that's what and that's why even for me and Eli, it's a similar struggle, Mm. isn't it? Mm. It's just that they're not hearing, you guy, what's up? Mm. It's, it's like, no, nah, it's yeah. like, no, this is how we are every day. Yeah. yeah. There's different yeah. types of people in, sorry, there's different types of people in every, every other race. Yeah. But it's like, it, when it comes to black people, it's like, no, you all need yeah. to be the same. Yeah. It's that's not every day top boy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think with the whole yeah. struggle narrative as well, like in the UK, like obviously we've got different um what's it called classes classes exactly like mm. it's not just white and black not just female male mm. like yeah. i wouldn't say like i haven't struggled my life hasn't been a struggle mm. yeah. like mm. i had a roof over my head mm. i had food every day mm. like i went i have my education all of this like i mm. was i'm privileged in that way mm. so it's really confusing to me when people are like mm. shocked that I'm just living yeah. a, a normal, life. like, good life. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. as relative as it is, mm. uh, as relative as it is, mm. because it's like, this is how my life has always been. Like, I haven't yeah. struggled. Like, mm. I didn't, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so I wasn't exposed to it. I wasn't exposed mm. to it. That mm. wasn't my life. But yeah, I. Mm. <sighs> It's very frustrating. It's very yeah. strange. I like that you you guys are unapologetic about it because I feel like the shock means they want you to kind of apologize yeah. or explain. Yeah, like, oh, sorry, I, yeah, like yeah. I apologize, Olivia. Yeah, no, <laughs> you so, just live in your yeah. detached house. Yeah, the, the, the you just live in your detached house. You just live house. in your five bed detached house. Okay, yeah. you too. Yeah. Like, I, I you don't have to give an origin story like yeah. I was yeah. poor and yeah. then I, yeah. I, I, you know, made it, it by myself. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. 
I think, I think like genuinely as much as um I love this as episode. much as it seems effortless as yeah. much as it seems effortless I think yeah. you guys are actually doing a really incredible service so because sometimes people think okay if we're going to change the narrative of our culture you have to be a Malcolm X you have to be mm. a freedom fighter you have to go oh, and be on the forefront right, right? Okay. but there's yeah. there's people that are like on the periphery and they're just adding right. to the pile of a narrative that's positive yeah. I think mm. that's what you're doing and I think the reason sometimes it stands out so well is because you merge that with your creative eye mm. so when you're making content about your everyday life the aesthetic that comes from it is going to look so different because I see when Becky I see when you guys t- take a picture of the same thing it looks like it's a different place mm. so that kind of just speaks to your creativity mm. and then your black excellence at exactly. the same time oh. so you're just you're, you're, no, Jenny, so you're actually doing something it. for like other girls that maybe they've wanted to be exactly. like that but they've not had something to model it off yeah. Yeah. the example is like Becky the way you dressed was just modest dressing mm. like a lot of girls like I didn't think I could do it but yeah. now I've seen someone do it it's yeah. like I can be a black girl yeah. and I can dress like this yeah. right Chatty with your yeah. preppy thing I could be a black girl mm. and dress preppy it's mm. it's not an exclusive yeah. white shop a glass aesthetic works. exactly <laughs> Because shop at Glassworks. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. Not? Um, mm-hmm. Just a sec. Um, just to kind of highlight that, um, and just kind of the impact of having someone who's a high ha, is into high quality experiences and is a person of color. Mm. Um, obviously, when I arrived mm. into 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 London, the first people I met were Becky. Becky and Tati first thing mm. they said we're going to Miss mm. we're going to do bills mm. and then after that every day. yeah after that we're going to go to this other really nice restaurant like you look at the the way they live their life it mm. like set it was for me it was like okay there's certain places I don't want to go and if mm. I need to know somewhere to go mm. I need to look for certain people who are black and mm. have that understanding if they're European mm. now that that seed that you planted I met someone in my class um, mm. um, his name is Rafael Maya Schmidt oh, um, wow what a name yeah, Ghanaian guy um, from Denmark, mm. and he has the same aesthetic in terms mm. of like he's because he's not apologetic for being a black man who's intelligent and who's capable and who's like mm. done has done a double degree in tax and is now doing one in law and finance and is also trying to you know he's now getting into private equity. He's not apologetic for being yeah. He's not a yeah. He's not apologetic for the babo jilets. He's not apologetic for saying listen, bro. Here's here this we Rolex is usually the thing for the first year. You usually wear black shoes instead of you know like the fact that he kind of. Put mm. like he kind of put that mm. <laughs> sounds like it's you know, a different tax. We are not, I'm lost yeah, in this yeah, conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we are just yeah, just listen, just listen. Yeah. And the reason why mm. primarily me and him kind of could relate at that level was because like he also noticed that I'm looking for high quality experiences. Mm. I might not, as someone who's just an immigrant from Africa coming in, you're an expert mm. student. You're an expat. Yes, yeah. yes. You see now, yeah. I get corrected like Reclaim that. Reclaim the word. Don't yeah. let them. Don't let them try and take you down. <laughs> Reclaim the word. You're an expat. Yeah. So mm. like, yeah, the fact that I'm an expat exactly. from mm. from Kenya, mm-hmm. um, kind of, kind of, he, the, it, he kind of set the standard for mm. this is how you relate and this is the way we do it here in London. Mm. And it, it didn't start from yo, bro. We're gonna go to the mall, bro. Mm. It didn't start from there. It started from, and it's okay to do that mm. at a certain age, but it started from high quality experiences you're a person of color but you're not going to go to um certain establishments mm. you're going to go to 10 greek street why mm. not mm. yeah you're going to go to 10 greek street where the the best chef or some of the best chefs come mm. here and cook mm. in london and you can enjoy a proper meal at a good yeah. price and mm. sometimes even a bit at a premium if mm. you have to mm. but it's your right to enjoy yeah, these exactly. things you deserve it. that's yeah. definitely been my yeah. mentality this year yeah. sorry Absolutely. to interrupt you but like it's been like why not you know, like mm. why, why shouldn't our I parents just... didn't work this hard for exactly. us to not enjoy life yeah. why am I here then yeah mm. like yeah. I don't want to struggle I want to go somewhere nice yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, go to the museum 25 pounds for the yeah. ticket and sure you, why yeah. not and if you raise your standard there it means that you're also working in class a mm. bit harder because yeah. now you want to access that exactly mm. you're yeah. not going to say Nah, man, that's not for me though. Mm. No, I'm not saying mm. that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, you know, Bond Street, that's not for me. It's mm. for you. Yeah, yeah. You walk yeah. Take up space, man. That's how. Exactly. That's how you change a narrative and how you change a culture by taking up space yeah. and just doing it passively, yeah. and then eventually more people take up space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. question. Mm. Last question, ladies. Okay. Do you oh. want to ask it? Oh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you can <clears> ask us. Then we'll ask you. Um. Yeah. Um. Which one was it? Oh, what is the greatest gift you guys have received? And that can be like, it doesn't have to be like a physical thing. It could be a lesson. Like, what would you say has been a gift to you and how have you received it? I think 
high Oof. quality experiences with high quality people. Mm. I think especially this year mm. um, and being being intentional about those experiences and about those people. So it's something that no one can take away from you. When you go on a trip with people you really care about, that will forever be here, mm. no matter what happens in life, right? Mm. And I've got so many of them, like the last seven days, the amount of experiences I've had with high quality people. Mm. <laughs> Stop smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Like they, mm. it's, I think, especially coming, like coming to Kenya, mm. like the, and the kind of work I'm doing, my lifestyle has been so fun mm. when I let it be fun. Mm. And I managed to now enjoy work even more. I think if I was just like in 2020 or 2019, sorry, when I was just working and not making space for fun or making space to nurture relationships and maintain them, mm. I don't think I'd probably burn out way more. I don't think I'd be enjoying what I'm doing or be able to be the most optimal person to mm. do a podcast, to do content, mm. to be a son, to be a brother, mm. to be a single man. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to, I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have these pockets of, is Beryl laughing at me? <laughs> <Didn't> <laughs> laughing. If I didn't have like these pockets of happiness that I'm finding yeah. with people so that's been the, the best gift especially this year since October 2021 and my birthday trip I had really high quality experiences mm, best nice. gift yo you are, you, are we saying wait it's just been one year it's been one year since my birthday yeah, yeah. the, 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 oh, yeah. the, the Kilifi trip yeah no way yeah it's been one year yeah oh, dog. we've done so that's what I'm saying we've done so many high quality experiences with high quality people man yo, yeah I didn't even realise yeah. I thought like it's like two yeah, because we've done so much. We've done so much. Do you know how time works? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, let, let's let's put into perspective. You know, yeah. let's put into perspective. What's, yeah, that's crazy. That's why that's my response, man. Because it's the best gift. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, me especially for me, it's been mad ever since. <laughs> my <boy. laughs> it's been mad. Oh my god. Okay. So my greatest gift, I think, has been. Mm-hmm. I have, I've realized, the power. Of being Shh, crap, might mm. cry. The, the, mm. I think I've realized the power of being myself this year. Mm. Oh I've my! I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. Like, yeah. like it's been. Mm. Oh my god! Like it's yeah. been. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just been wow. It's mm. just been like I don't know. I remember at one point you were close to apologizing about being yourself. Mm. I remember at one point we had a conversation. You're like. I was just being myself. Why it's not being received? And then we kind of were like, it's everything's fake. Like mm. everyone's perception is fake. Carry on being you, yeah. and then your tribe will find you. Mm. And I exactly. think that's what I've seen happen to you. Man. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's oh, man, it's like it's unbelievable, man. That's yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a gift you've given yourself. It's unbelievable. Mm. It's mm. you know so when great. you get mm. to the place where it's like, I am enough. Mm. Mm. It's mm. like, yeah, yeah I think very like, few people feel that as well. Yeah, yeah like mm. you know, like. Okay, we start the podcast, everything's going well. February gets there. Because now I realize it's one year now. Like, mm. it's, I think it's really hit me now. Mm. February gets here and I'm like, now nah, I'm going to do a drastic shift. Mm. Drastic shift happens. May, we're in Johannesburg. Mm. 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 Yeah, mm. okay. You've come back from Joburg, you're back. Okay, what are we doing next? Next, you're in London. Mm. You meet new people. Mm. And all these new people I've met, mm. I've changed nothing. Like, I've not, I've not done any adjustments mm. in terms of like... Obviously, there's that, like, trying to understand people and trying to, like, be social and be agreeable. But, like, mm. it's just been me. And this energy has been the same. Mm. The fact that I've invested in myself for so long, I'm seeing the payout. I'm now starting to see the, mm. you know, because, like, the guy, like, Raphael, Zach, um, mm. another incredible guy um, who's from Namibia, who's done a double, ma- who's done, who's doing his second master's, mm. done second two scholarships George Washington like ridiculous George Washington fellow Shevening scholar oh meeting meeting Shevening scholars um, my roommates um, two ladies who probably work in fashion and for example in Gucci were very French um, Kiara and Agat all these specific people mm. a guy who's Chinese and Swedish but like is funny in the Chinese mm. like, to that, you know that like, like that way of like blunt humor mm. all these specific people like if i could name a list mm. from the moment i arrived in london like just the fact that i have met an incredible group of people over time mm. in this year mm. rotimi georgie mm. then that means mm. it's all happened mm-hmm. in one year mm. for me so like i feel like um I, you have to move ivy over 25. Mm. Yeah. rebecca rebecca yeah. tmi yeah, all exactly. that like that whole <laughs> Um, Victor, like all that, mm. that entire 
cohort of human beings that I've met in the past, like 365 days for me, man, like it's just been mad. Mm. So I think it's that, it's that, it's that ability to be yourself. Even my relationship with my friends, my family, mm. it's all like, mm. 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 yeah, you've made me think now. So it's yeah. like, it's yeah. been so fun to watch, buddy. The growth has been incredible. Yeah. Been incredible. And the nights have been better. Oh my goodness. That's a different, that's a different podcast. <laughs> that's Hello. another Shout one. Hello. Hello. Uh, <laughs> that's a safe space. Uh, <laughs> we'll just move to the final well, question. We'll just uh, move we'll to the final question. Uh, so which ladies, is, ladies, uh, please ladies, like, do ladies. the honors. Yeah, for sure. Um, to just divert. Uh, um, <laughs> we like to leave our audience mm-hmm. with something that they can go and be inspired by. Sure. Yeah. Because the idea of somebody sitting here means that they have a certain level of either work ethic perspective or like mm-hmm. a career mm-hmm. that is impressive and that can help someone else. But you don't get to that place mm-hmm. without investing in time and consuming things that are going to mm-hmm. elevate you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we always want to find out what's one thing that you've consumed that's elevated you and kept you going or inspired you or changed your mindset mm-hmm. that you think somebody here watching should go and read, watch, see, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, drug it first or? Sure. So this past year, I've been really focusing on my financial literacy. Mm. So I think a book, I listened to the audiobook called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Mm. Just about like investing, learning how to look at money, changing mm. your relationship with money. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that was like a real turning point for me. I think mm. I listened to that around the start of the year. Mm. Um yeah, so I'd yeah. say that book. Who's about? I I will. I don't know off the top of my head. You'll find the link. It's You'll fine. find the link. We'll find yeah, the link. Find amazing. Yeah. But yeah, Ooh, Becky. Um, it would be a book. Technically, it's two books because mm-hmm. it's the same author. But I feel like if you read one, you have to read the other. Mm-hmm. So the first book I would say is The Mountain Is You by mm-hmm. Brianna West. I believe that's the author. And then she also has another book called 101 Essays to Change to Change mm-hmm. Where You Think. Mm-hmm. And for me, like The Mountain Is You, I read at the beginning of the year, and I was like, oh. You are the Am mountain. I the drama? Like, <laughs> <is it> me? <laughs> like it literally, it really yeah. makes you like look at yourself. Like, oh, and it makes you ask questions about yourself that you never would have thought about. Because mm. mm. you can kind of just go through life. This is what I've been thinking like this year. Like, you can go through life not thinking about what you're doing, just on autopilot. Mm. And this book really makes you just like sit down, think about the choices you make, think about how you perceive things, how things are happening around you, and really reflect. So it's been really helpful for me. Mm. And I'm still reading 101 essays. Um, and that's like a really good book to kind of just open your mind because mm. it's like different mm. people have contributed, I believe. Um, so, yeah, those two books have been very interesting for me. Mm. So, yeah, I recommend them. Amazing. They will all be. Wait, there's linked. one more book. Another book? Go. I think you've read it. Mm. Atomic Habits oh, yes. by James Clear. Yeah. Yes. Oh, book. that book changed that my book. life. Yeah, yeah. I swear. It's mm. basically just how you can make um, small, tiny changes every day to mm. lead to like a greater result, greater mm. improvement. So, mm. all those changes compound over time yeah. mm-hmm. changed my life yeah, I remember same. reading that like so I can do anything yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm amazing and <laughs> so I'm yeah. literally I am yeah. yeah that that book was everything so yeah, yeah. I love it that's I such a good book I still yeah. haven't read it yeah. read it you'll love yeah, it you'll really love it it's such a good book listen to the audiobook if you don't want to read it it's only like yeah. eight hours or something yeah only. I believe in physical yeah. yeah you can do that double in like speed. less than a week double speed get a book These double guys, speed is, you're yeah, an intellectual I always listen to double book. speed <laughs> do you not yeah. find that's a bit too far it down. no write, after write like notes. a minute you kind of your, your ears, ears adjust and you're like okay cool now it's just four hours <laughs> That's that's wow. the idea. Okay, it's a book enough. club. Book club stresses me out. I have like a week to read a book and then wow. just yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to join a book club. So Remember when I was doing Why that with Will? Should we join a book club? Make a book club? But for like non-fiction. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll join. I would actually join that. Virtual. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. For sure, oh my for sure. gosh. Just one is Atomic Habits. No, but I've already read it. Yeah, but Oscar hasn't. So we have oh, to do it. I'm reading again. Yeah. I need the inspiration. Guys, we'll make a group chat. Okay. But like, but like. We'll add Oscar. But like when we when I started reading books at twice the speed with Will, you're like, mm. dog, that's crazy. You're missing the whole experience. Like because mm. sometimes there's some books like um, the Nine Lives of Baba Seki's wives. wives, the Secret yeah. Lives of yeah, Baba yeah, Seki's yeah. wives, mm. um, where the narration is so good. Like mm. you want to hear mm. how the how you know this drama yeah. is, you know. And the the way she walked into the shop, everybody knew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, is that how it sounds? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's That's incredible. So cool. Yeah, like it's like it's incredible. Mm. Or, or um, so like I'll, I'll definitely give it a listen, girls. Audible. Yeah, if we yeah, could sponsor yeah, yeah. mantalk.ke, that would be, be great. really That'd great. Be so guys. Great. We'll be sending you an email shortly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So yeah, good stuff. Um, I think to summarize, I think I just wanted to like give you flowers again and to say, don't stop. Thank you. Thank you mm. very yeah, much. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Um. I think I even I would if I had a daughter and she was consuming your content mm. 
and like challenging me on it as a dad, I'd be very happy. Oh, so, oh. thank you. So, yes, yeah, see you guys. Thank, thank you. Guys, I should give you a flowers then. Okay, so, <laughs> Becky, uh, no, generally, um, as a little sister, I'm super proud of you. Um, I see the behind the scenes. Yeah. You seem very jovial, but I see the work that goes into what you're doing. Yeah. And I'm so glad you found this friendship with Tati. Because you're basically the same person and you can motivate each other. And I Great see yeah. me and Oscar, our relationship basically paralleling yours. Mm. So I know how essential it can be to have someone in the same space. Mm, someone is. you can like fight battles with and, and bounce each other off. So keep the so friendship, cool. keep the content coming. And yeah, we're proud of you. Yeah, I think, I think they're like us, but the difference is they're way more organized. <laughs> yeah, you're way more organized. Way yeah, more yeah, organized. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we love just the chaos. It's, it's like, we love God. it. We love it. Yeah, yeah, I think they stuff. have a caption for this episode. Oh, yeah. Mm. Two sides of the same coin. Oh, powerful. powerful. That's cool. Yeah, powerful. I like that. Done. Mm. Done. I like that. Done. That's Done. good. Amazing. Right. So, um, just, I just want to give you guys your flowers. Okay. All right. As someone who's, you know, been here since the beginning, uh-huh. seen the growth. I am so proud of you guys. <laughs> look at you. Look at where you are now. Yeah, actually. From, you know, like trying to get people to like, please, can we film it? No. Now it's like, yeah. Yeah. Look at the places you guys are in. Look at the team you've got. Yeah. You've done so yeah. well. I'm so, so well. Oh, thank I'm, you. Honestly, I'm so proud. I feel like a proud mother when I see you guys. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 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 from the jump. Please, please do the please do the Kenyan accent thing. You know, I'm so proud of you boys. <laughs> oh. You really elevated <laughs> man talk. Yeah. yeah, I'm so proud to my very core. Mm. Mm. God bless. Mm. God bless. Mm. Have you been telling anyone about the podcast? You know, I told my, my, my friend Tris. Mm-hmm. I told my friend Sandra. Mm-hmm. And I told my friend mm. uh, Tati mm. yeah. I've told them about you yeah. and they've sent it on WhatsApp mm. so now their sons are going to also watch it mm. <laughs> so annoying so, I love you. you are now inspiring future generations yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh. Thank you. Ta- Tati please tell us what you think about Mantalk right into that microphone I think Mantalk is amazing as you said in the beginning you guys are, are you doing the- something different I've never seen before like with male led podcasts mm. so it's really amazing to see especially here in Kenya mm. so i see man talk being so huge mm. so global mm. and i can't wait to see what you guys create from Aww. one podcaster oh. to, another. to another let's yeah yeah do you want to do a quick shout out no everything's going to be like it's, it's, time, it's time for us to tati you, you you've kind of glossed over the fact yeah, did. yeah where can we find that you? you have a podcast mm. where can I we mean, find your podcast okay i have a podcast it's very early stages yeah. so yeah. don't keep your hopes up too high <laughs> but um it's Sorry. called as seen in we talk about film tv entertainment who is we um, me and my friend Kaylee. Um, What's yeah. her handle? Her handle is at Kaylee Carter underscore underscore. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we have guests on as well. We do press. So like when a film comes out, we'll like speak to the actors and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's basically oh. that. Other platforms? Other platforms? Um, my Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest and YouTube are all Tati Kapaya. Amazing, amazing. And mine are all I am in karate. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hopefully thank you see for you back us. and thank enjoy you. Kenya. We will. We will. Karibu Kenya. Karibu Kenya. Thanks, Jambo. Jambo Bwana. Habari gani? Nzuri sana. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. <laughs> yes. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Half as much as we enjoy making it. Because we had a ball. We did. Come oh. on. See you next week. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>